just wanted to say a couple of words about Mussorgsky's pictures at an exhibition. I get troubled when I go around giving master classes to find such a large number of people who don't read scores accurately. And most of the things that happen, as all of those of you who teach will already know, um, you end up spending a lot of time telling people to do precisely what is already printed right underneath their noses that they haven't yet noticed. One of my particular bugbears in pictures is right at the end of the Great Gate of Kiev, where it's become a very bad tradition, not helped by conductors who do Ravel's version, of course, uh, of turning Mussorgsky's two three-bar phrases just before the last grave. They turn that into some kind of four-bar phrase, but he's, he's gone to some trouble to have a rhythm with two hemiolas and then a two-two bar. So the rhythm should be just playing roughly. That's without the ritonota. But what very often happens is you get... Which makes a terrible little commonplace out of something that Mussorgsky did which was very clever and original. Anyway, that's just one of many things which one notices from time to time that people don't properly observe. Another thing that always worries me is people who don't have big hands, and that's at least half of the piano playing world, who when they're faced with a chord like this, and have to arpeggiate it, do so before the beat, and very often lose the bass note from the pedal, or worse, they pedal before the beat and catch half of the preceding harmony along with the one they're intending to play. I just picked one at random out of, out of this work in the uh, old castle, right at the very end. Now I can stretch this chord, but if you can't stretch this chord, um, there's no point in crying about it, you just have to work out a good way of playing it. And in order to do the crescendo from forte onto this note, it means I'm sure that you have to play at least the G-sharp of the left-hand chord at exactly the same time as the G-sharp in the right hand, and probably better to play the D-sharp as well. So, in slow motion, just playing the B late, so... And that way it's tidy. And that will apply not just in this piece, but in a great many others. Just two little points about the text. Of course, I hope we're all using a serious Urtext edition of this piece. There are several. Um, they, are both, they are normally based on the um, facsimile version of the manuscript, which was published in Moscow in the 1970s. And there are just two things to say. One is, in uh, the promenade... Uh, it's uh, number it's number four in the score, or well, just after number four, be between four and five. There's an octave sign which I think is wrong. Uh, I think it's been drawn by accident. The, the manuscript that we have is a fair copy, so it's been very neatly copied out by Mussorgsky, but I think he's extended this line by three notes too many. In the score it's printed... <laughs> see any earthly reason for putting those last three chords an octave higher, especially since we're about to <laughs> imitate it melodically. The only actual mistake that I found in any of the text editions is probably not a matter of very great moment, but for those who care to know, the very last note of the piece in the left hand tremolo there, those notes should have four beams rather than three. In other words, in American, uh, there are 128th notes, no, sorry, 64th notes, and in England, they are hemi demi semicolas. But that's not a matter of tremendous moment. For the rest of it, the Urtext editions are good. But the old editions, such as the one that Ravel based his score on, are very bad. For example, ending the two Polish Jews with instead of 
So a good edition is very important. Thank you for watching.